Hey everyone, welcome back to Soren Explore as we're continuing journeying through the Bible in a year yeah. and we're, we're continuing to make good progress. So yeah. we're going to cover quite a number of Paul's letters in this video. So we're going to cover Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon. Mm. And we're by no means going to be exhaustive. <laughs> and I know I usually ask you to kind of give us an overview. There's too many letters to do an overview. So yeah. just kind of what, let's just kind of jump right in. Like what, what are some of the themes that you see? What are some of the the patterns that jump out to you and what do they mean for us today? Okay. Well, uh, quickly looking at each one of those books, I think of Galatians, uh, where again, we're reminded of law versus grace sure. or liberty. Mm -hmm. uh, Ephesians uh, really shows us in the first three chapters our unique position in Christ. It's oh, beautiful. And then in four, five, and six, the practicality of living that out. Yeah. Uh, and Philippians, a book of joy that Paul wrote when he experienced a lot of heartache. So it's a good reminder of, okay, how am I doing mm -hmm. when I'm running into a problem? Am mm -hmm. I happy or am I, you know, upset? And uh, Colossians, again, I think, comes back with some of the themes in Ephesians that Correct. we see. Yeah. Where we uh, are, again, drawn to Christ and, yeah. and who he is. And, and then the uniqueness of relationship in that little book of Philemon. There's so much in that little book. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So much in that little yeah. letter. Oh, my word. So, y thank you. Thank yeah. you for that. And, and one, of the, one of the themes that we've really touched on, I think, at several points along this journey of going through the Bible, is seeing God's heart and His mm -hmm. desire to have a diverse family yeah. that's unified in Him. Mm -hmm. And so, doesn't this just reflect who God is? Right. He is. He's one, but He is three persons in one. Yeah. So unity, diversity in that community. Mm -hmm. And we see this in these letters. We see this especially in Ephesians. Mm where Paul talks about how Christ has broken down the dividing wall mm. of hostility. And we've touched on this, Pastor Bob. I, I think it's hard for us, it's hard for me, it's hard for us to understand today just how profound yeah. the Jesus movement was and has mm. been, but especially was at its inception mm. with Jews and Gentiles, yeah. non-Jewish people, uh, coming together under the banner of Jesus. Yeah, and coming together from different backgrounds. You had that uh, Jew like the Apostle Paul after his conversion, mm -hmm. who was very uh, uh, deep in Old Testament study. Very much so. Uh, yeah. You had the Hellenistic Jews that kind of swayed a little bit, you know, and kind of became part of the Roman government. And, mm -hmm. and then you had the Gentiles, of course. And so mm -hmm. in, in that whole mixture, there were so many, there were slaves, there were free right. people, there you know, so many different levels of people right, who became right. part of that way, the way, as it was referred to in the book of Acts. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it's amazing. Again, when you look at that, you see the diversity, but the oneness that we are in Christ. Correct. And how he encourages us in Ephesians that we actually need to steward that oneness. Mm -hmm. We need to work hard to maintain right. that oneness. Yeah. And then connecting this, this idea of the multi, kind of the multi everything, mm -hmm. if you will, the multi everything family yeah. of God. And how really this, this traces all the way back to that promise that God made with Abraham, mm -hmm. which then connects all the way back to the promise made to Adam and Eve yeah. after they ate of the fruit, yeah. that there will be an offspring that will come yeah. from the woman who will crush the head of the serpent. And then to Abraham, that promise is picked up. Abraham, it's going to be through you. I'm going to bless all the nations. Right. You're going to have a family of descendants who will mm. be as great as the number of stars in the sky mm. and the grains of sand on the beach. And here we are. Yeah. And now we, we're just, here we are several thousand years later and we get to be an extension yes. of that. So yeah. you can say, that's great. That's all up here. What, what does that have to do with practically following Jesus today? Mm. And I think it has profound implications because if you remember, in Galatians, Paul actually talks about how there was a time where he had to confront the apostle Peter yes. to his face because Peter had, he knew all of this theory right. Right. that is reality because of Jesus and he knew it up here. But when it came to practicing it, just like we all do, he had this moment of sliding yeah. backwards and he found himself, Peter found himself eating at the table, but only with the Jewish followers of Jesus. 
and Paul has right. to confront him. And for Paul, there's this, this confrontation matters because of everything that we just talked about. Yeah. So can we let's unpack that one a well, bit? What does I that think, mean for us today? Uh, yeah, I think it's interesting because you have to back up a little bit as well and see God directing Peter to the Gentiles. Exactly. Yeah. So <laughs> even before the confrontation, you know, Peter had this vision to go to Cornelius's house. Right. And so and and God ex so clearly told him, you know, what I have made clean, do not call unclean. Yeah. And, and then, he's not just talking about the animals yeah. and the food. <laughs> but, you know, I think it also is true. I mean, we do it. I, you know, we have to be honest, you know. I think there are times, depending on the strength of the personality, mm -hmm. we're persuaded. Oh, sure. We might think, oh, well, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe I should do it. And yet we know. And, yeah. Yeah. And for Paul in Galatians specifically, I mean, this isn't all this stuff, but in Galatians, it's the clearest. You said this earlier. What, what matters to Paul? Why does he confront Peter at the table? Why does he go as far to, to talk about uh, emasculation in Galatians? Yeah. I mean, what is he doing? Right. <laughs> it's because he's so convinced yes. in his heart of hearts yes. that the way to be in this family of God is through Jesus. And the way yes. to Jesus is to respond by trusting him. Right. And as you mentioned, that language is pretty direct in chapter one of Galatians. Yeah. And if, I mean, if I or anybody else preaches yes. a different good news about right. Jesus to you. Yes. Whoa. And Let we, we, yeah, yeah, we water it down, uh, but it is strong language of condemnation of, you know, almost like condemnation to hell. You know, yeah. you are totally out of the picture yeah. when you are moving in that. I mean, he was really out of it. Right. And, th and think about this. We, we talked about Corinth in a previous video and we, we said, look at all the, these, these issues that they were divided on and how different camps within the Church of Corinth wanted to, to take any one of those issues and raise it to a mm. place of preeminence over Christ. Yeah. And so here in Galatians, Paul is arguing, uh, you, you, some of you with a Jewish background, you want to take circumcision, which was a sign of yeah. the covenant to Abraham, a sign mm. that you were in God's family, and you want to take that and you want to make all of the non-Jewish Jesus followers who are males get circumcised. Yeah. And he says, Absolutely not. I mean, yeah. he argues this so passionately and emphatically, and I hinted at this earlier. He actually says, look, if that's as far, if, you, if you're going to die on that hill, you might right. as well just emasculate yourself. Yeah. Cut the whole thing off. This yeah. is what he's saying. I mean, yeah. I don't, I'm not trying to be crude. I'm just, this is, this yeah. is in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. And this matters passionately for Paul. Yeah. And so think about what does that mean for us today? Okay, so we're not, we're not talking about this. circumcision. What right. the heck? What the, doesn't mean anything in our context. But think about this. Like the church in Corinth, how many causes, lowercase c causes, do we want to take any one of them yeah. and raise it to a place of preeminence and say, someone doesn't and can't follow Jesus unless they pledge allegiance to this party, unless they handle finances this way, mm. unless they practice these types of habits and, and, and disciplines in their life. And that's not to say that Paul doesn't lay out for us guidelines and guardrails because they're there right. Ephesians 3 through 6 4 5 right. and 6 I'm yeah. sorry uh, there's some pretty clear right. guidelines here so that's not to say that there aren't any guidelines but he is very emphatic the way to Jesus is trusting in him receiving that grace through faith and what's the evidence of that a changed life and it goes even deeper you know we talk about what you just said pastor Joe about the circumcision in the flesh yeah Mm -hmm. But there's a deeper issue, and that's the circumcision of our heart. Exactly. And exactly. so there are a lot of things, like you were just describing there briefly, there are a lot of things that we probably need to look at and say, oh, I need to perform some circumcision here. Of the and heart. It's not, right. It's yeah. not physical. It's of the heart. Right. I need to take that away. That, yeah. And and so, I, Pastor Bob, that's so good. You're spot on, right? Because. The Old Testament prophets, they, they make this accusation against Israel, the covenant yeah. people of God that traces their lineage back to Abraham, mm -hmm. where they're saying, look, you, you are physically, the men are circumcised, but you're not circumcised of heart, which is what you're just, you're articulating yeah. for us. And that's helpful. Yeah. And you're, you're right. How many issues, how many causes have I made? Mm. Have we made? Are we making presently? Mm. 
non-negotiable, I'm going to die on the hill, and all the other Jesus followers who don't do these things right. that I do are yeah. less than. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. It's it's a lot there. <laughs> there is. I don't even know where you begin. My <laughs> word. Now. Yeah. Now another point of uh, relevancy. How do we? How do we like? How do we overcome that tendency? Paul makes it clear. We're new creatures in Christ. Right. <laughs> We've got yeah. the Spirit within us. Right. Yeah. Let, let's talk and, about that. And so, with that Spirit in us, you know, God doesn't. Uh, he doesn't circumvent topics. Yeah. Exactly. And, and and the biggest one I'm thinking about right now mm. is getting caught up in a lot of uh, negative government talk or mm. whatever. I mean, Paul. Like you said, we are we are believers. We're new creatures in Christ. So how does a new creature approach all of life? Well, exactly. Romans 13 talks about hmm. our response in government. Or you look at other chapters, other topics, you know, it's there. Right. But instead of approaching it from a citizen of this world, hmm. I approach it as a citizen of another world. Right. And that... That's hard to do. I'm sure that, you know, you look <laughs> around the world today, it's hard. not just America. I mean, there are probably proud Germans. There sure. are pro probably proud Englishmen, you know. Uh, so it, it, it's a matter of all of our hearts. Right. It, it's not just one country. Right. So I want to be careful when I say that. It, 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 regardless of where we live, it's how are we living and who are we living for mm -hmm. wherever we live. Right. And, you know. No, and you're you're right. I mean, and, and Paul taught, he uses this language that we're citizens of heaven. Right. Right. And and by the way, I I think I think when he's talking about that, he's not simply just reminding us of what will happen when we pass from this life to the next. Right. What he's actually saying, he's tying I think to his teaching in, in Ephesians in the beginning where he talks about how right now, right yes, now, in this, yeah, in in the this moment. moment, you and yeah. I, if we're in Christ. We are spiritually seated with him in the heavenly realms. You're like, but what, what does that mean for today? <laughs> yeah. Well, and that, that's a good point and probably a good uh, reference maybe to study, uh, whether people do that on their own mm -hmm. or we sometimes do that here. But it's true. You know, we, we live as though we're not there yet. Right. But God says you need to live because you are there now. Correct. And, and yeah. we have trouble with that. Yeah, and, and we're, we're on a journey. Paul's immensely patient yeah. with these fledgling new churches. Right. But he's also very emphatic yeah. <laughs> on what are the non-negotiables. Right. And so I think when he's saying, look, view life through the lens of you're a citizen of heaven. Yeah. That's where God dwells. Right. He rules and reigns, and what he says in heaven is accomplished. Yeah. Right. Yes. It's it's done. He decrees yeah. it. Boom! It happens. Yep. So here on earth, so I think the Lord's prayer, right? So if His will is to be done as it is in heaven here on earth, mm -hmm. how is that going to be done? It's going to be done through us. Yes. Through His people. That's how He has chosen to primarily operate right. is through His people. Yeah. So we're on a journey, and God's patient with us, like Paul was patient with the churches. But that call to something greater, that reminder of who we are in Jesus. The power that he's given us through the mm. spirit that raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand of the Father. The, the, the riches of the gifts that he's given us. The fact that when he sees us, we're right. fully forgiven and we get to live out of that, not for it. And strive out of the fact that w when he sees us, he sees the righteousness of yeah. Jesus. Yeah. It yeah. is a radical reorienting of who we are at the core of our yeah. person that we're new in Christ. Yeah, I've been thinking about this. Uh, one of the things that I've um, been teaching uh, through self-confrontation mm. and talking about spiritual gifts. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and it was part of the lesson, and I, so I'm still processing. Sure. But I throw it out to you, process as well. If we are citizens of a new, of, a, of heaven, and we are here on earth to be God's ambassadors, mm -hmm. even acting out our spiritual gifts in the world, you know, has an impact on the people who don't know Christ. 
So if I have the gift of giving, for example, Mm -hmm. I may find that spiritual gift used in my community, not just my church. I may find it used in my home toward my family. Uh, So I don't know. I'm just, again, I'm just kind of processing this. How do my spiritual gifts, how should they impact Mm. a world so that they, the world might know or come to understand God. Exactly. So, so along this whole line of circumcision of the heart, yeah. uh, all this kind of blends together uh, in the sense of being a part of a heavenly kingdom. And if we have these heavenly things given to us, why wouldn't we be playing them out? Yeah. In er- on earth. And that's, I think that's the logical conclusion of what he's saying here, yeah. right? So as, as our future, informs our present yeah it shapes the way that we interact in the present yeah in the world and that it's actually through those interactions of generosity is one example right that people get a taste mm-hmm. of the coming kingdom of jesus right yeah because remember right every knee will bow yeah and every tongue will confess yeah and i don't think for whatever this is worth is just my opinion at this point i don't think that's like this picture of he shows up on the scene and he's like, just bow down because this is who yeah. I am. I, th- I think it's more what we see with, say, Isaiah in the throne room. Mm. He's in the presence. Of, he he has no right. choice. Yeah. His response, I'm just going to fall on my face. Yeah. Because I'm in the presence of the most holy. Right. <laughs> right. It's, yeah. I, just, I can't do anything other right. than this. Yeah. And so we, we're to give little foretaste of that in the yeah. now. And I think we have wonderful freedom in the Holy Spirit to be led by him to determine what does that look like in our neighborhoods? Right. What does that look like in our community? Like that's actually part yeah. of the excitement and yeah. fun of following Jesus, yeah. which yeah. is wildly hard, but there can be joy and fun in that process. Yeah. So yeah, goodness, there's so much here as always. I, I think there's one there's one other point, Pastor Bob, yeah. that I'd really like to hit. And then sure. if there's anything that you would. So kind of talk with me on th- this idea we see uh, in Ephesians with uh, marriage, and Paul's encouragement to husbands and wives to, for husbands to love mm. their their wives, lay themselves down, yeah, uh, for for their wives, and that their wives are to follow that example in kind of this ever dance, yeah. if you will, yeah, and how radically different that was than the culture of the day, which, uh, on an extreme, but much more of the norm than it is today, women were viewed as property, right. Yes, to be and, managed yeah. by their by their husbands. Yes, and divorced easily. Oh, when there with, was with something no, that, yeah, we talked of, we talked about that uh, in one of our Thursday night services mm. when we were in Matthew about divorce. Mm. You know, where uh, a husband, you know, it was so common if they, I mean, I use modern day language, but yeah. if they didn't clean the house well, they could get divorced. Yeah. You know, it was a matter of, hey, I'm done with you. Exactly. Move on. So low levels of commitment. <laughs> yeah. So now you find that word agape, mm-hmm. that sacrificial love that Christ showed. Yeah. Paul saying in Ephesians, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Yeah. And and so uh, that that important word there. And what's so interesting is when God speaks to the wife, He always uses the word phileo. Mm. And and the Mm. truth is, uh, and and again, I know this only because of talking to women, Sure. but a woman is drawn to that person who is sacrificial for them. Yeah. And I think today in our culture with so many emotional affairs, Mm. when you get some woman who has no love at all at home, Mm. and now another man is sitting listening at the lunch table Mm. and asking good questions, Mm -hmm. there's an emotional bonding, not healthy, but it happens. Yeah. And I think it's that phileo love Mm. that that woman has, that emotional part of her being that is drawn to that one who's paying attention. Mm. So when I look at Ephesians where God's talking about that, you know, it's a strong reminder of not only husbands, show the right kind of love to your wife. Yeah. And I think that reverencing part, that idea of respect, that idea mm-hmm. of, you know, just uh, honoring, it, it falls into place. It's a natural outflow right. of, of the sacrificial leadership right. that, that occurs. And I'm sure because uh, people make individual decisions, Paul had to stress to wives 
about this respect mm -hmm. to their husband because you could have a godly husband mm. and you could have an ungodly wife. Sure. And in fact, the scriptures yeah. talk about that in the sense of, mm. again, I think we go back to our last episode of Corinthians, that the unmarried, uh, they stay in the right. marriage if they, if they choose not to leave. Yeah. And so right. you, you had situations where people were married mm -hmm. in the new first century New Testament church that uh, in, in the community where people got saved and they were in those circumstances. Right, right. And, and, and in that section in Ephesians, and we see Paul touch on this elsewhere, but then, especially with Philemon, he mm -hmm. actually gives a word to slaves yes. and slave masters. And we do not have time to unpack all of the it, nuance because truthfully, there, there's a lot there. Slavery was yeah. very different. Yes. And I'm not saying that like in a good way or a negative way. It just was right. culturally very different yeah. than what we might hear as Americans when we hear slavery, which has a whole separate set of right. baggage with it that is important to talk about. Yeah. But my, my bottom line is we can read passages like Ephesians or Philemon and we can go, what the heck? Why? Why wasn't Paul just mm. abolishing slavery? Why right. didn't God just abolish it? So can you, can you share just kind of your well, thoughts? Well, I, I think it's like uh, what we see in the Old Testament as well. You know, we look at some topics in, in the New Testament here, like slavery, and God was seeking to provide the best mm. solution to man's corruption. So mm. this slavery was wild, running wild. I mean, you know, it was totally out of control. Yeah. And so in the midst of that, God established some guidelines and standards mm -hmm. for the believing master and the believing slave. And we see that in Philemon. Yeah. We see where Paul is seeking. In fact, he says, you know, you, you need to see Onesimus as <laughs> your brother in Christ. Which is crazy in the cultural yeah. context. So can you imagine you're a slave, you come back, because Paul's sending him back. Yeah, because apparently you stole something yeah. from Onesimus <laughs> right. and then ran away and became a free person. Yeah, right? so you're going back and now you, I don't, I don't know, I, I, would, I can't wait. Maybe God will tell us or maybe we'll run into Philemon or Onesimus in heaven and what happened there? Yeah. What happened? Did they, did this master all of a sudden, you know, provide a different income? A status? What happened now that he's a brother in Christ? Yeah. Did he set him free? I mean, we know he went back. We right because he know. was already he had already right. Come so we don't free. know what happened yeah. in years to come. After right, that. right. You know. And in that scene, Pastor Bob, how Paul, if I can say it this way, Paul places himself in the position of Jesus mm -hmm. by by saying in the letter. <laughs> Leveraging his position as an yeah. apostle, like Onesimus, by the way, you know Jesus because of my work. Right. And I'm sending your former slave back to you. Yeah. I didn't have to. Yeah. And by the way, whatever he took from you, put it on my tab. Right. I'll yeah. eat the costs of that. Yeah. I, I mean, come on. Like, yeah. if he's not living the gospel out in that moment, right. and, and so here's so here's the point. I recently said in, in a message, I talked about what the Bible is and what it's not. And I said, it's not primarily an answer book. And what I meant by that was we have questions today, like where should I go to college? Or should I marry yeah. this person? We cannot turn to a right. chapter and verse and go, right. oh, there it is, yes, I should. Yeah. We should take Paul's example that we see lived out yeah. in Philemon in this letter. The Bible and our faith in Jesus should inform and shape the way mm. that we actually make decisions and interact with others. And what a beautiful embodiment of the good news of Jesus, this mm. short little letter of Philemon. Yeah. So look at, study it, read it closely <laughs> and go, okay, I think I understand better what Paul's doing here. And then go, okay, Holy Spirit, help me to see how I can yeah. do that in my spheres of influence. Yeah. And there's that deeper level of living in a world and living out truth. Yes. You know, whether it's the, like I mentioned, the spiritual gifts earlier, but in this case, exemplifying Christ. Yeah. And, and the sacrifice and payment. Absolutely. Which you could even go way back if you wanted to. Yeah. It's in the Old Testament. Absolutely. And the Redeemer. Kinsman yeah. Redeemer. Yeah. Boaz to Ruth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. 
It all ties together. <laughs> but you know, we see we see God. We see this pattern. Yeah. Through Scripture. That's uh, beautiful. Which is exciting. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for your patience with us in this video. We know it was a little bit longer than probably some of the other ones have been, but we covered a, a lot of material here. And thank you that you're continuing this journey with us. We hope that it's a, a productive one, a profound one, and one that is helping you to, to better follow Jesus in your own life. Yeah. So thank you, and we'll see you next time.